Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I'm finally going to get around to starting, at least, my Halloween mixed media canvas. I have a little canvas here, it's an 8x8, and it is one of my uh, rescued canvases from the local charity store, thrift shop, and it's just simply a cheap canvas that I've painted over with gesso. And um, I have this paper, which I didn't actually make for this particular project. It was just a piece of scra uh, scratch paper that had some stuff on it left over from another um, project. And I just ended up um, adding more stuff to it, some jelly printing on it. Uh, this piece right here is actually a baby wipe that had color that I was using for wiping off stuff. And I just uh, matte, medium, matte medium it all down. And I think I'm going to start with it and cover this canvas with it. Um, or maybe I won't. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that with this because I have these. These papers that I made, they're on deli paper and on tissue paper and Halloween theme. And I'm just going to tear them up and I'm going to lay down a layer onto the sides and the top of this piece. And I'm going to glue it all down with some gel mat medium. And then I'll hit it with um, a heat gun and let it dry. So this is going to be done in stages. So this is my first layer, just getting some basic background down. And um, I'm just going to start the process here so you can see how this works. And then I will jump ahead to the next thing. So I'm getting a little gel mat medium. And this happens to be um, from my local art store, Curry's, which is actually a chain um, across Canada. Um, but they've started out with their own line of uh, artist products and they have gesso and they have gel matte medium and they have varnish and so they're considerably cheaper uh, to buy than Golden or Liquitex so I'm trying them out to see how I like them in comparison to the other ones. Okay so let's just get down some matte medium here. I'll we'll take some of our tissue and just tear off some pieces. I'm going to let them hang um, over the edges quite a ways because I want to be able to glue them down. Do the edge here. And I will trim off after it's dry um, the bits and pieces that are overhanging it. In fact, I'll just glue these down here too. If I get some wrinkles in the paper, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do the edges first. And I'm not being that particular about the corners because a lot of this is going to get covered up as time goes by.
In fact, I may even paint or ink around these edges as well because the paper didn't go all the way down the side, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Corner's not too good. Oops. Definitely not a gallery wrap. Okay. Put some more down here in the side. On the top, that is, not in the side. Because this is my first layer, it doesn't matter if this is imperfect because there's going to be more layers on top of this of other things, so you'll never see really this. A lot of this is going to get covered up. Let's get maybe something a little bit more purple into it. Okay, so I'm just making sure my edges all have matte medium on them. Mm, maybe we should cover up this edge at the top here with another strip.
Now these pieces that are in here, I won't worry about those until this is to totally dry and then I'll just cut those off. Actually, because I don't want this to stick down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a paper cup out and I'm going to turn it upside down, put it on here so that the bottom part won't stick to my mat. And then I'm going to draw, let it dry and I'll be back. Okay, so now I want to do something a little different on this canvas. I've got my background paper all on here and uh, I bought this. This is a roll of fake spider webby kind of stuff. I got it at the dollar store. Um, you got a fairly large roll of this and it looks like it's made out of like just basically uh, some sort of a, a coated string or something like that. So I've cut a piece of that off and I'm thinking of putting this on here, but I'm thinking of before I glue it down, going over it with some of the Vicky Bouton gold glaze. I'm thinking of giving this whole thing, um, this Halloween canvas, a more metallic look with the elements. So I'm thinking I will put this on this first, let it dry, then I will glue it down, and then I'm going to take this stencil from Mike Deacon and using some textured paste, which I think I will also tint um, with maybe, not maybe Vicky Bouton, but something else, maybe a coppery tone of something, and put, put that over on top of it on this side. I may just down the side a little bit, down in here. And then we'll go from there. So let's move this out of our way. Start with this piece here, just kind of curling up on me. And I'm going to grab fairly wide paintbrush. Not this one. This one needs to be reconditioned. Okay, I was a bad boy. I used this with matte medium. I washed it out, but I should have treated it as well. I'm going to have to do that. There's this brush. This one might work okay. And I'm just going to get some of this out. I'm going to put a little of this out onto my sheet here. It's probably more than enough. Oops, wrong brush. Okay, figures. <laughs> Get the right brush here. Now, I've just had a thought, too. I wonder if I should try and do this in like sort of two colors to give it a a more rustic look. Maybe I will um, pick up some of this color from under here. Could have done this with uh, inks as well, but if I use the oxide inks, those would have been water soluble and there's going to be wet medium on top of this. So, no, this will probably be better because when this dries, this is permanent. Okay. So what I'm thinking now is maybe a slightly different color, um, but not in the glaze. I've got some metallic paints here. Maybe something more in a coppery shade maybe this one grab another brush here smaller brush
That's kind of neat. But I'm thinking too, I might want to go over this with um, maybe with some walnut stain um, or a brown ink pad just to grunge it up a little bit. Okay, let's put these to the side. Um, let's do a little cleanup. Let's hit that with the heat dryer. And you don't need to be watching this. This might take a minute or two, so I'll come back. Okay, so I've dried this, and it's got the gold and the copper, although it looks more copper than gold, but that's fine. I've still got some little white spots showing up, but I'm not going to worry about that. But now I've got out a stays on uh, timber brown, I believe it's timber brown yeah stays on ink pad and I've got out a ink applicator and I'm just going to lightly go over this just to kind of age it a little bit Okay, that's all I'm going to do. And I'm using stays on because it's a solvent ink. And since I will be putting wet medium on top of this, um, I don't want it to run. So the stays on will be best for that. And even though it is stays on, I am going to heat set it just a little bit here. And I'm going to get out, get my canvas, and get out my gel medium, and I'm just going to lay that right down on top of here. It sort of blends into the background a little bit, but it's subtle, and there's going to be more layers on top of this. So I need some gel medium. I'm getting low on gel medium here and I need a brush I'm gonna put on a fairly generous amount of this because I really want this to stick well And this will dry clear, so. So that should do it. I don't mind if it comes up a little bit on the edges, that just adds more texture and dimension to the piece. So I'm going to hit that with the heat gun for a bit and then I'll be back for the next stage. Okay, so I have heated this with the heat gun and it's pretty dry right now. This has not yet disappeared yet. This is going to take time for this to, to dry clear, but I can think I can work with my stencil right now. And I'm just going to put this sort of off to the side and um, yeah I'm looking at these big spots here and I don't want anything in those so I think what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to first spray my stencil with a little repositionable spray. This stuff you can't get anymore, this particular brand. So when I'm out of this, I'm pretty much out of this period. So I'll have to go and find another type of repositionable kind of spray to use. Because I like to put these on my stencils on the back just to hold them down. And I don't think I want these big areas to get filled in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sticky notes. And I'm just going to apply that one there in this one down here. And I'm just going to, to protect the rest of my area, I'm just going to put a sticky note over here. And I'm going to put another one up at the top. So I'm basically I'm masking off parts of my stencil that I don't want to get any of this texture paste on. Okay. So then I was thinking, should I go to the metallics? And I don't think I want to use the metallics yet. I think I'll use black, but I'm going to use my modeling paste. I'm going to put some of this out here on my craft sheet. Just a little bit more. And I'm going to tint it with some black gesso. Now, black gesso will give it a matte finish, which I think will be fine for this, because um, I'm going to make things a little bit more dazzling as we move on here. So. I just have to, oops, get my lid off. I'll just get this all mixed around so that it's even. Now, the uh, modeling paste lightened it up a little bit, but that's okay. It's more of a charcoal black now. Let's put our lid back on. I don't use black gesso very often for things, but this is one time when I thought I'd get it out and give it a try. Okay, so I think that's got it. I don't want it terribly thick, but I do want to make a fairly good impression. Now you can see why I put down the masking uh, of the sticky notes as, as a mask. Okay, so I'll clean off my spatula and then we'll do the reveal here. Get this up off my craft sheet before it dries because then it becomes much more problematic in getting it off. Okay, let's pull these away carefully. Okay. 
doesn't matter how many times you clean yourself, you always have more paint. Okay. Well, don't think I'm that impressed. That went under the stencil, probably because part of it's raised. And so, well, I'm just going to let it dry for now. And um, I wonder if I take. One of my little catalyst tools. I wonder if I can make no, no. Better off leaving that alone. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and um, I'll just cover it over most of it um, with uh, my other elements. So it's not a complete disaster, but it didn't work the way I was hoping it was going to work. Okay, so I need to get my stencil and water and let this dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so my canvas is dry and now I've been auditioning some pieces to put on top of it and this is what I've come up with right now for this canvas. Um, but I, I'm not going to leave them in this, this color scheme. I think I might leave the trick-or-treat um, in the purple but I want to pick up that shade of purple in some other spots on here as well. And I think I want to cover the uh, wood chip pieces here in more of a, a rusty patina kind of uh, finish to it. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this little casket that says eek. Right now you can't really see the eek underneath it. But maybe I will put something in behind it and make it show up. And I think I'm going to alter the color of it slightly as well. Um, not sure what I'm going to do yet with that. So I have these all laid out. I've taken a picture of them so I'll remember where they go. And now I'm going to uh, paint each piece separately before I lay them down again. Okay, so I've decided that I want to give these uh, wood chip pieces that are plain right now sort of a rusty, vintage kind of look. Um, which is not really traditional Halloween colors, but um, I think might be more interesting. So I have out my, uh, um, what do you call these? The rust paste effects by um, Finnebear. And I'm going to try these. Now, I'm not sure which one to put on which order. I guess I'll, I'll start with the goldy color, the yellow. And um, I've got my big bat here, so I'm just going to go all over it. With this color to start with. And I'm getting the edges as well. Um, now the edges are actually already dark color black. I think I'll leave them as they are. A little bit more of this on. And then I'm going to take out the, what do they call that, the terracotta? Red rust. They just call that red rust. Okay. Oops. I'm kind of just dry brushing this on. I don't want too much, but And then we're going to get out the uh, brown rust. And I need another brush for this. 
This one will probably work okay. Audition this next to the piece. Okay, that's not bad. But there's something missing, something I need, and I'm not sure what it is that I need. Um, maybe I need a little bit more of this red rust around the edges. of my bat wings. I'm still not that sure about this. Let's hold it up here. Something missing. I need a little something else. You know, these wings are pretty plain. Hmm. I wonder if I take a stencil. Or even if I stamp on it. Maybe with a little scripty effect. Well, maybe first I should take this and dry it. dries pretty fast. Now I'm just, it's kind of rough because there is some texture in this paste, some grit. Okay, now I'm thinking if I take a stamp, and I'm just going to take a script stamp I think. Um, let me find one and I'll be back. I've pulled up one of my favorite background stamps from a Tim Holtz collection. This one with the little crackles and things on it. And I'm going to use some archival black ink. And this is what I'll think I'll go over the wings. Oh yeah, I like that. Looks like little veiny parts. Yeah, that's cool. That just gives my butter or my butterfly, my bat, a little bit more dimension. Yeah, I like that a lot more. But it still needs something on the edges. So I've been thinking about this, and I think I'm going to grab. 
some metallic paste, uh, gold, and copper. I have copper and I have gold. Hmm. Copper and gold. Yes. I think I'm going to try the gold. Let's clean off my finger a little bit here. Yeah, I kind of like that. Well, of course, nobody's ever seen a bat with gold on it. But then again, this is all very whimsical. Now, yes. Yes, I like that. So. I'm going to leave that. And I'm also thinking maybe I should treat the trick or treat with a little gold around the edges of it too. Yeah. Sorry, I'm off uh, camera. I just realized it. I'm just going around the edges of these letters, not being too particular about it, just to give it a little bit more dimension. Okay, now I'm wondering if it would be enough just to do this to the little casket too. I'm still not happy about how the eek is not showing up. Let's see how this works. If I, oops, if I put I definitely need something in behind on the eek, I think, to make that show up a little better. Um, so let me see what I can find and I'll come back. Okay, so I took this little casket and I put a piece of orange uh, cardstock in behind just so the letters show up a little bit better but I'm not sure if I'm completely happy with that yet I'm still thinking I'd like something glittery in there but I'm afraid that if I do it may not show up enough at that but if I use my stickles where are my stickles and if I use maybe actually if I use this is crystal so the orange would show up through it, but it might give it a little bit of sparkle. So let's just see. I don't know, it's kind of tricky getting it in. I think I can.
Okay. That's not bad. So I'll leave that to dry. And then, let's see, moving on. Let's take out our spider web. Now, the spider web, I kind of want it to pop from the background. So, I don't know if should I use the rust gold. I've got some metallic paints here. Maybe I'll try a metallic paint on it. And maybe I'll go with... Move these out of the way. I might go with this shade. Let's see what that looks like. I might go with two shades. Let's get a clean brush out. This is definitely going to give this a metallic look. I love these little metallic paints. This was a kid's set of paints that I bought at an art store. They were very, very inexpensive. They came in this little tray, so you can't even take the bottles out. Um, keeps them from spilling. I guess makes them kid-proof. But I really like them. Okay, let's give this a quick dry. Okay, let's just audition this. Yes, I do like that. I do like that. I'm thinking this whole thing needs some sparkle, but in the meantime, I've got the skull. And I'm not sure what color I should do this in. Maybe I'll, I'll stick with the metallics, but this time I'm going to use, so there's a bit more contrast, I'm going to use this one on the end looks interesting. I'm not sure what color that's supposed to be. It's kind of a rosy gold. This is definitely not a color we would often associate with a skull. Let's just see how this looks up against. I think it's too bright. I think it's too bright. So no worries. I'm just going to give it a dry. And let me try this one on the end. This one might be a little better. Yeah, I like that better, but I think what I'll do is, better do the jaw part too. I think once I have this dry, I'm going to go around its edges as well with the gold rub.
Okay, let's give these both a dry. This paint dries very fast, by the way, so that's a good thing. Now I'm kind of wondering too, maybe I should take that rubber stamp that I used on the bat's wings and maybe do the same thing over the skull because the skull's kind of plain. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm dry. So let me grab that rubber stamp. my ink pad. Yeah, I like that. And there we go. Okay, now we maybe give this a bit of a heat set. And I'll just keep this rubber stamp out because I might do that on some of the other pieces as well. I'm not going to glue this down yet. I'm just going to set it in approximately the spot where I'm thinking of putting it. Okay, then I have these little bats. And I think I'm going to keep to the metallics, but I think for a little contrast, Try the bronze or whatever that is. That's a kind of a goldy color. these and I just got thinking of something I should do with the skull um, I didn't rub the gold around it yet forgot to do that so I'll do that next after I get these bats dry And I think I will add some of this rubber stamp to these as well. Okay. Just lay them there for now because I'm not sure exactly where I want to put them. But I think the skull, I'll go around with some of that gold. Or maybe not. The gold's not really showing up. So maybe what I should do, I want this to stand out. So. I could take um, some black ink and go on the edges, or I could use some brown. I'm going to try a dark brown. Let me get out my timber brown stays on ink. Yeah. In 
combination with that metallic paint, it almost looks like a gold as opposed to a brown, but I think it gives it a little bit of definition. I might do this around the bats as well. Yeah, just gives it a little bit more subtle shadow definition to these pieces. And you know, I think I might do the web as well. Just to make it stand out just that much more from the background. And of course you can see my big black mistake that's on there. But with this on top of it, it's covering it up, so I don't think anybody's going to be aware that that's really there. Maybe even this one. Even though I put gold on this already, I'm just going to go lightly around the edges of it to Kind of on a roll here. Trick or treat as well. What the heck, why not? I don't think I'm making a difference on the casket, but we can give it a shot. Now, let's put these approximately where they want to go. Now, I have this spider. He's just plastic, but he doesn't really show up very well. So I'm thinking, I think I'm going to coat them all in this color, just like I did with the bats. Again, not a color of a spider you would find in nature, but then this is nothing natural about this uh, layout to start with, so it doesn't matter. And maybe I'll just leave it looking a little bit half done. Yes, now he shows up a little better on there. Oops. It's fiddly, it's not where everything is. But not, I haven't got everything laid out exactly here because I haven't glued anything down, but I'm just looking at this. And I was thinking of doing this in purple, but what I could do is I could take out some purple stickles. If I have some purple stickles, yes, I do have some purple stickles right here. And we could just add a little dollop right there. Now, 
Now I'm wondering if I should do anything else with this purple stickles while I've got it out. I'm just trying to pick up the purple that's in here and there's some in the background as well. Hmm. The bat. Should I do something to the bat? What would happen if I followed some of these lines? I'm not doing them all. I'm just kind of picking and choosing. I have to be careful with this because stickles takes a while to dry. Okay, that gave me a little shimmer there. Now, what do I want to do with these little pieces that I have here? Maybe a little wink of Stella on those would be good. The Wink of Stella gives it a very subtle little sparkle. So when the light hits it, you get a little something, but... thinking this could use a little bit of sparkle as well. I like my bling. I mean, yes, kind of. This might be borderline tacky, but then again, it's Halloween. Isn't everything in Halloween a little bit on the tacky side? That's the whole whimsy of Halloween, I think. Definitely need to buy some new Winks of, Wink of Stellas. Okay. All right. Anything else I want to do to this? I don't know if I'm that happy with this, how this is turning out. Um, Well, I guess I'll leave it for now. 
we'll see. Okay, so I need to let this all these things dry now, and this is going to take a while to dry before I want to handle it again and get it uh, glued down to my base. So I'll come back once that's all done and finish up. I have everything laid out on my background right now, and um, I'm going to glue the pieces down. I think I'll use a combination of gel matte medium for this because these are fairly heavy pieces. I'm going to use some pop dots or pop squares, dimensional squares, to raise some of these pieces up. And uh, of course this will dry clear so no one will see that. But before I do that, I'm just going to take these pieces off, lay them to the side. Because one thing I want to do is I want to go around the edges of this with uh, some dark brown ink just to age it a little bit. And I'm going to use stays on ink again and I'm going to use that timber brown that I used on uh, some of the pieces. And this just gives it a bit of a shadow effect. Okay, that's good. All right, so I think I'm going to put the web on first, and I just want to position it. So I'm just going to spread a little bit of this on the back. And I'm not worried about it, um, how much I've got on here because enough to, to stick it down to keep it there, but it will dry clear. So. But I do want to make sure I've got enough on here to keep it and I'm going to hang off a little bit off the edge just to give this piece a little bit more dimension and I'm going to take a fine paintbrush and I'm just going to clean up a little bit of this excess Because even though it dries clear, I don't need that um, excess sitting there. It's going to take it that much longer to dry. So I think I've got most of that cleaned up. The rest of that will dry clear. Okay, and then we'll do this piece.
All right. Now, I've got my skull head here, and I was thinking of raising it up again to give it some more dimension. So I've got some pop dots here. They're not pop dots, they're dimensional squares. And I have them in two sizes. I have larger ones and smaller ones. Smaller ones will go in the smaller spots. And the jaw, don't forget that. Okay, now for these, I am going to get out, um, no I'm not, I'm going to use the, the gel, matte medium. I thought of putting a little bit of glue on these, but uh, I don't think so. But I do need my little paper piercer here to get the backings off. And what I like to do is put a little glue, or in this case the gel matte medium, on the back of these just for extra security. There we go. Okay, then let's get, and again, I'm going to have this one go off the side a little bit. Now I'm wondering, should I do it flat or should I raise it up? I think I'll do it flat because I'm going to raise the bat up and I want the bat to overlap a little bit on that. So, yeah. So I'll do this flat. It's got dimension on it anyways because um, it's a, a wooden piece. And again, a little bit of a cleanup here on the of the excess. Oops. of that will dry clear so no problem. Now for the big bat I want it to go a little bit over here I think. So I'm going to put some dimensional squares on this as well. And it looks like I'm out of big ones so let's just use a couple of the smaller ones here not a problem and I'm getting a little bit out of shot here I'm just taking off the backing on these little squares
just make sure everything's making contact with the canvas. Okay, so this one I can put either straight across or we can do it sort of on an angle. And I think I like it on an angle. And the one down here is just going straight across along the bottom. Oops. Got a little messy there. Okay, now three pieces left, my little bats, and I'm just wondering, my little bats should be raised. I don't think I'll raise the spider because he's already kind of three-dimensional, but um, yeah, I don't think I'll raise the bats either. I think I'll just put them down flat because it's already, the spider web gives it some dimension, so... Putting a fair amount on the spider because he's kind of heavy. sticks okay. And I got some glue on there that I didn't want. Not. Okay, so I've got everything glued down. So I'm going to let this dry. I might apply heat gun to it after about five or ten minutes once this matte medium sets up a little bit. And then I'll uh, show you the final product.